Welcome back to the MS 52 wall clock series. I don't know how old this clock is. Any ideas? I don't know. Um, no idea. Like, it's mid-century, but it's not quite as space easy as you might think. I originally thought it was like early 50s, but now I think it might be a bit later than that. But who knows. Anyway, we're going to be dis disassembling this. And I need to work out how to get this thing unscrewed without destroying stuff. I've had a closer look at the hands and they're held on with a little nut. Looks like it. Oop, where did that go? That's a good start, isn't it? It went up my sleeve and on the floor. Let me just pick it up. One of the things about this YouTube channel stuff bounces when you really least expect it to bounce. Such as that. And, oh, yep. Yeah, these hands definitely should be shinier than they are. I'll probably sand them down a bit, probably polish them. I think I'll just put a bit of sandpaper on them, to be honest. Don't need our polishing stuff. And will the hour hand come off? Oh, yeah. As expected, the hour hand usually pulls off with fingers. If it didn't, I probably would have broken something. And can I unscrew this movement? I think sometimes you can just do that. Oh, wait, no, maybe that's not going to work. I know sometimes on stuff like this you can just unscrew the back of it like that. I don't know if that's going to work out for me today. I'll try and do it in a way that probably they designed you to do it. Which probably involved using a pair of, well, probably a special kind of screwdriver actually to get in those notches, but I don't have that. So, ply as it is, I'll look at some prepared this special Christmas paper or something, whatever it is. Just rip it a bit, rip it down the middle. I like that to protect the porcelain. No idea what I'm doing. Probably should use a bigger pair actually. Just gonna grip the sides of it and twist it around. Oh that actually worked. Ah, surprisingly that worked. Okay, I can probably do it from here. Yeah. Yeah, this is working out. And this is where we find out that it doesn't actually unscrew at all and I'm just twisting the metal and breaking it. But this definitely needs to come apart. Yeah, it's working. Barely putting any force on it. There's a washer under there which protects it anyway. Oh look, and now it's to the point where I can do my fingers. I don't know how I'm going to tighten this thing up, probably the same way. So we've got a threaded thing. I think a lot of modern quartz movements have this, I probably won't mention quartz though, because who likes to mention quartz? And yeah, off comes the face. Inside we have three weird... don't know what those are. Maybe that's... wait, there's another number in there, 3584. Yeah, I don't know what on earth is happening with this. Is it from 1984? I doubt it. Uh, this needs a clean, doesn't it? Look around the numbers. Definitely not from 1935, I don't think. Oh, lovely, yeah. Um, yeah, we've got this rusty thing. It's all over there, as far away from possible. Blow on it to get the bits of fragment off. Here's the movement, which is mounted to a... What's this? It's spring-loaded washer on there. It's mounted to this sort of plate, which has screw holes in it. Maybe it would have also been a screw-through-the-front kind of thing. Yeah. Let's get this off anyway. Probably won't disassemble the movement today, but I will let it down. So I'll do that first so I've got something to grab onto. Let's put some there. We've got... It's a nice little movement. And to let this down, I think... Can I see the click? Yeah, it's on the back. Hmm. Unfortunately, it's in a really inaccessible spot. Okay, I'll remove the stop works first, because that will allow me to let down the movement to its full unwound potential. Let's get this clip on. There we go. This is working out really well. I'm surprised we haven't run into any problems so far. Remember this is not a tutorial, this is a vlog. If you're thinking this is a tutorial when you're watching it, it's not. How do I remember the orientation of these gears? I don't. I don't know how to remember that. But I will 
take them off and I think we can work it out when we put it back together. So now that's there. Can the key fit on the back as well? Yeah, it does. Maybe this would have come with a back winding thing. I don't know. No reason why not, I don't think. You can see it's only a very small amount of um, room on there to put the key. Unless it gets bigger when you put this on. Yeah, it does get bigger, actually. Probably to keep the dust out. Good idea, that. Never seen that before. The thing is, how do I get this down to a point where it's down there rather than up there? Beyond me. What I'll probably do is remove the balance wheel, which has a removable, unscrewable, what's the name? That, that side. I'll probably take the um, hairspring out first, using some tweezers, which I. Oh, I found them. Wow, me finding something. Uh, is it there? It's a very delicate balance wheel and spring here, so I don't want to mess with it. Because if the hairspring on this goes, look at how small it is. Such a fine spring. And I'm probably ruined. I'm not ruined, the clock is. My reputation probably ruined. There we go, we got it. Alright, I'll have to keep this in a... That's probably not a good pot to use, I'll get another pot. Look at this one, this is a banger. Put all this in there. I think it's a pretty conventional movement design. Just unthread this regulator and like that. I think it's an eight day clock. This will be probably the first eight day clock I've done on this channel. I think it is. Nearly there. I think you got it. Oh, not quite. What do you zoom you in on this? Okay, we got that out. I'm super impressed. Yeah, let's zoom in. Boom and zoom in. Got this really delicate balance wheel out. Yeah, that's a thin one. Pivots look good. Put that in there for uh, security's sake. Put it over there, out of the way. So now we can probably ring around with this thing. And I think we can remove this to help get the spring down into a position where I can let it down I think so get my screwdriver out there it is <laughs> Make a bit of screwdriver okay it's coming um, I don't want this to fly Put my thumb on the wheels to stop it spinning. A lot of wheels in this. Look at the amount of pivots there are. It's only a time only clock. Time piece rather. Got a nice um little uh location things. So if I just take this out like that, nice pins on there. I can probably just do this actually. Yep, alright. So this might take a while. I'm just letting it down like that to get the um, click to a point where it's accessible. And it's going to take such a long time. I'm going to pause the recording and then get back to you when it's in a place and I'll put the pallet back in just while I'm winding any further. So, we got that let down to a point where we can reach it. The mammoth amount of old oil on there. Uh, put the pallet back in, still works, that's pretty good, but I don't want to unwind it anymore because we need to let it down. And to do that, good old method of letting down, we just do this. Hope this doesn't explode. Um, hang on a minute, it's probably about stuff exploding, I don't know if it will. Actually, it's a pretty good idea if I take this off now because um, if I take the 
the washer out. It gives me better access to it. That's if these nuts want to come off. Rusty. Oh. Well, it's seized. More seized than a Caesar salad. Right. That's coming off. Little by little. interruption there it's okay so yeah these nuts these nuts coming off how hilarious hmm the rusted ones it was easier to take off than these ones do there yeah. Jerome striking loud as a crowd of angry um, screech owls. So that's that off, and now we should be able to. Yeah, this comes off. This is all guesswork, but I've never done this before. And uh, that comes off. We can see it's rusty. And um, we can take this off. And we can take this off. And there's a screw on there, which might. No point taking that off now. Might as well do it anyway. Oh, no, but it's not a screw. Okay, not touching that. Um, yeah, we can let it down uh, with the key on all the way. It's not going to come off. Key on the peon. Alright. So, eight day spring challenge. This is really stiff actually. Uh, any better thing I can use to hold this in place? Or I just have to use my hands? Hmm. Just thinking. I don't really have anything to hold it in place. Just have to put my hands at risk. So, yeah, doing that releases the click and then I can just unwind it. Problem with the round movement is it's going to roll. And rolling it will. Rolling movements are not what we want. Hmm. I guess I could put my finger in there. No, that's not very good, is it? Yeah, I need some way to hold this movement down whilst I unwind it. What if I put this back on? That'd be slightly more. No, it wouldn't barely any grip. Hmm. Bit of a puzzle this one. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's see if I've got some sort of spanners I can put around the pillars. Yeah, nothing I tried worked, sadly. So I'll probably have to just remove the pallets and let it spin. Hopefully that won't cause too much wear on the things. I will leave this to spin. What if I do take this off? Maybe it unscrews this way around. May as well try and experiment whilst it's doing its thing. What if it unscrews this way? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what's happening there. I'll figure that out later. A lot of rust. So there's no date stamp on this. I do expect there would be, but there isn't. Maybe I can assist its unwinding by sort of putting a bit more power in them. No, that's just going to put more stress on the thing, isn't it? Alright, I'll leave it to do its thing. Like that. Snailing away along. It would be weird. And I will come back to it when it's unwound. 